WTV, your cutting edge television station, interfacing Africa and the rest of the world with excellent documentaries, business news, investment opportunities, lifestyle, and much more. We're currently on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. You can also view while on the move at www.firstutv.tv. First View TV, changing the narrative. Thank you very much for such an elaborate, insightful uh, background of your journey uh, on the pathway of your medical career. It's a known fact, which you were alluding to, your passion for Nigeria. It's something that we all know. Share with us what really has been the basis of such passion? What has inspired such passion? Because your passion is quite infectious. Professor Barrow, <laughs> share with us. I don't forget at the start I said I'm a very proud black man. And for that matter, a proud Nigerian. Something I didn't actually mention earlier was that at some point, even in my radiology training, uh, some people advised me to change my accent in order to fit more with the environment. So that, that will help my career. And I said, change my accent? That's my identity. I will not change my accent. Another consultant, so concerned, I will say, actually advised, asked me whether my wife was white. I said, no, she's Nigerian. She said, it might help if I married a white woman. <laughs> I said, my wife and I quarrel from time to time, but there is no way on earth I'm going to divorce her because of Kalia. She's too precious to me. She's been by my side. We have weathered the storm together. So, like my son once told me, he was born in Scotland, but whenever Scotland and England are playing football in those days, even though we've settled in England, he will be supporting Scotland. So I said, why do you keep supporting Scotland when you are in England? He said, Dad, that's where my placenta is buried. My placenta is buried in Nigeria. And I believe passionately that nobody, I've never seen any country in this world that has been developed by another country. The only countries that have been developed by people from other countries are the Western countries that took our people as slaves to them. But as a matter of national policy, no country is very developed by any other country. Other countries exploit other countries from the superpowers to the everything. So if Nigerians don't develop Nigeria, who will develop it? No matter what I achieve as an individual, I feel diminished. I feel diminished by an undeveloped country. This brings me to my next question in line with your passion. Some 20 odd years ago, you were instrumental in setting up the pioneer body for Nigerian medical professionals in the United Kingdom, the body called Mansung. Can you just give us some background and how that came about? Yeah, you find just maybe about four or five people, the same people gathering up together to have a meeting. So I said, no, this can't be it. We can do better. So I now called one of my old medical schoolmates, uh, in ABU in those days, you know, um, 
I said, look, we need to form a medical association uh, that will encompass all Nigerians. What we have in this Nigerian Medical Forum is not fit for purpose. So, after I spoke to him, he now gathered some people together in his town where he is, and um, they convened a meeting and um, kind of had a first meeting uh, there, you know, to nurture this idea. That first uh, meeting, I wasn't there, but it happened. But the subsequent meeting, they came over to London, we had a meeting, and then that body kind of uh, said, okay, we'll form this uh, body. And actually, at that time, I didn't want to be in the committee. But one of our professors back home in ABU, then, who was around, you know, insisted I have to be on the committee. Uh, so, because when those people met in, uh, in the town, I think I want to keep that quiet, you know, where they met, they are kind of more or less constituted an executive already, even though I'm not sure the idea, but that didn't bother me. I just wanted the body to fight her cause in the UK because as a black people and seeing what we've been through, we need a body to protect us. We need a body to allow us to exchange ideas, to support one another, to encourage one another. So when I'm, so that has happened, I said, I don't, know, I don't need to be on the committee, but this uh, my professor who is deceased now, I mean, so rest in peace, said no, because he knew me from um, uh, back in ABU, and actually my medical activism, in I'm so, so, started a little back from university. Um, so he said, no, Ulu, you have to be on the committee. So I assumed the position of PRO, but then the next election for president came up. I then became the president then. And now, having become the president, that gave me uh, a more leeway to drive the agenda. And I'm very grateful to God uh, for that opportunity because I believe I was able to really galvanize the medical community. And beyond that, the fallout was also the other Nigerian professional bodies, uh, associate or individual, saw what the doctors were doing. I said, now we can do the same thing. So you now find that the lawyers also got together, the accountants got together and formed their own body, which became very, and eventually the need for us to be able to work together now became more embedded in our mind. We still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go. But it's great to see how the body has grown over the years and um, making big impacts um, in the UK and engaging with official bodies in the UK and also with official bodies in Nigeria. Um, a lot more uh, could um, be achieved particularly from the Nigeria end, if we had a more receptive government. And apart from Mansak, um, as you may well know, I've been involved um, in the diaspora community. I was the first, uh, uh, I was the secretary uh, of the healthcare uh, subcommittee at the inception of NIDO itself, the NIDO as we see it and was the first chairman of uh, NIDO UK South and actually had the privilege of um, introducing the bill to create a diaspora commission many years ago with Ambassador Kishi. That's about 50 years ago. Himself and myself presented the first bill to the Nigerian Senate you know, to establish the Nigerian Diaspora Commission. It's a history that probably many people are not aware of, but I had that singular privilege. So the drive has been on on so many scores, on so many fronts, because I just believe as a country, as a people, we are not mobilizing ourselves well enough. Your role within the community has been nothing short of been legendary. And on this path, of such passion, you and your wife embarked 
on a major project, a multi-billion Naira project, to set up a stroke rehabilitation center in Nigeria. The project would have been a source of help to countless but you did encounter challenges along the way. Can you share with us your experience and how you were able to overcome those challenges? Uh, it's one of the saddest chapters of my life and my wife. The Stroke Center is a combination of several other attempts we've made to interfere in the healthcare sector in Nigeria. We have always prepared ourselves to go back to Nigeria. My wife is a trained midwife. She's a trained pediatric nurse. And as part of her preparation to go back to Nigeria, she also did training in ultrasound. That's many years ago. Uh, we've made several interventions and um, medical missions in particular, um, not small ones, big ones, which we've organized over the years and um, donated medical equipment, I dare say by God's grace, through our own personal resources, which we believe we've been blessed by God and given the opportunity to do. But we are determined to go back and go back and do something permanently. We've made other efforts which have been sabotaged by people. And time will not allow us to go into that mess, but my father, from what I learned, died of a heart attack because he wasn't ill. I just got a phone call that he was dead. My wife's father had a stroke. And in the course of, and he survived for about four years after this first stroke. And we had to be managing him from here. So we saw the huge problem, a lot of which are basic problems. So when you connect heart attack, and stroke, there's a common factor, the blood vessel, is what is involved in both, to put it mildly.